Hello and welcome to the Bytech Connect webcast. This is episode 6. We will have our main interview with Zishan Farouk from Fluiding. Stay with us. Okay, we're now back with uh, our today's uh, invite, uh, today's guest. Uh, this is uh, Zishan, Zishan Paru from uh, Fluiding. Hello, Zishan. Hi, Guillaume. How are you? Good. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, what I'm, uh, I like to ask you, if uh, like I ask everybody else, yeah. is uh, what is your title and uh, your exact um, role in the company? Very cool. Yeah. Uh, so my title, I'm an account manager at Fluidime. Um, I cover uh, Eastern Canada and the Northeast US, uh, primarily Massachusetts uh, focused and Eastern Canada, uh, Ontario and Quebec. Uh, my role, it's keeping customers happy, straightforward, uh, you know, keeping them happy. Uh, you know, I do a lot of uh, demand generation activities uh, to be able to get new leads and prospects and really grow that uh, community right? Because it makes it fun for everybody else to collaborate and research. Um, I also get to work with uh, application scientists, field service engineers, R&D, uh, product managers, uh, to be able to take care of new customers by, you know, trainings and bringing their technology um, up to date and online. Uh, and then also taking care of current customers and overall just keeping that experience positive and uh, make coming out with new products that uh, the market needs and wants. That's uh, sums up kind of what I, I, I like. I like this, uh, this, uh, uh, this way of uh, seeing, you know, the relationship with uh, your customers and with your colleagues. Um, yeah. But can you tell us more about your company itself? Yeah. The products so, uh, or services? Yeah, I mean, our, I mean, our customers range from, uh, you know, top leading academic institutions, government accounts, um, industry, you know, top pharmas and biotech, a lot of leading research labs worldwide. Um, we're, we manufacture uh, market multi-omic technology. So many are familiar with our proprietary Cytoff technology um, and also our microfluidic technologies, uh, such as the C1, Biomark HD, and Juno. Um, the company, you know, we focus on pressing needs in uh, cancer, uh, in immunology, in immunotherapy. And recently with, uh, you know, COVID-19, we've seen a heavy um, interest in our uh, entire portfolio um, for uh, uh, infectious disease, which was an area that we, you know, we served, uh, but didn't serve as much, as much as we did our, you know, immuno-oncology arena. Uh, but now we're pretty much a, across the board. And at the end of the day, the goal is to provide high level technology that people can use and really gain insights into their, their pressure samples. Yeah. In fact, as a, and you know, um, kind of as, I, as a scientific myself, you know, ex scientific, you know, I'm not, you know, doing science anymore really, but I'm still working with a lot of scientific people uh, and yeah. matching them together, networking with them. And uh, I find this is uh, other than, you know, all the bad side of this uh, pandemic uh, story. Uh, this is exciting to see how the scientific community is all putting uh, work together and um, helping each other. Yeah. Everything is going faster than it used to be. Uh, oh, it's and this is, uh, yeah. this, yeah. is uh, this is fun to see. I'm trying to, uh, to, to, to follow everything that is happening on the science uh, side of the, the, the story, as well as, uh, you know, in uh, uh, general uh, information about this. And uh, this is overwhelming. You know, there, there's new information every day. Yeah, no, every day, every minute. I agree with you. And then, uh, like you said, um, I'm seeing, you know, institutes just put on their website, hey, look, let's collaborate. Let's get to this. You know, where before it was very much like, no, this is my secret. It's our sure, secret. Yeah. They're like, listen, we understand that some things are going to be a secret, but at the same time, let's decrease that so we can get to a solution. Now, I, I agree with you. It's, a, it's pretty cool to see. And uh, funding wise, also, this is faster. Yeah, you, you know, so um, when things get better, um, which they will, um, I'm going to go back to the funding institutes and be like, guys, you were able to fund so quickly all this other <laughs> stuff. Why is a CFI taking two years? You know, <laughs> uh, I, I suppose I hope that, uh, you know, a lot of change, things will change for the better, you know, when they realize, oh, it was easy to do at that time. Yeah. And uh, th this is for everybody as well, not only scientific, but, you know, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, teleworking is now more and more easy and yeah. uh, there is a precedence. So um, there is no excuse anymore because we know that this is possible, practical and uh, not too uh, difficult. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How yeah. did you uh, knew about uh, Biotech Connect and, and uh, how does uh, uh, it, um, you know, uh, goes into your marketing strategy? Right. Um, so I think it was two summers ago. It was at the McGill Innovation Center. And I was leaving the building on the fifth floor, which always confused me because fifth floor goes outside and it goes further down. And you know, then I this see is it in the mountain. So each <laughs> door is, will not, yeah. uh, you know, each exit door are not at the same level. Yeah, I mean, my sales career started, uh, I mean, I'm born and raised in Montreal, but I lived in the States for the beginning part of my sales career. So when I moved back to, to Montreal and McGill was an account of mine, people would be like, oh, I'm on the fifth floor. So naturally I'd walk in, but it was already the fifth. And then I'd be like, whoa, wait a minute, is this number one? I don't understand. Do they not want to see me? Uh, but uh, no, so I was leaving the building and uh, there was a bunch of vendor tables and you know uh, as, as a sales rep you know we have an ego and i was like well why wasn't i invited to this what is this event happening um so you know i saw a couple of uh, ex-colleagues from other uh, other companies that i've been at um and then afterwards i see you come over and you're like hi i'm guillaume Goya, and i do uh, a biotech connect and i was like who's this dude you know who's this What's yeah you are already chatting with uh, you know the other vendors and uh, yeah and oh I, I should introduce myself yeah and you came right up and then and i was like hey what's this and at first you know what I'll, i'll be honest you know it was my uh, i had just uh, come out of a meeting and i was like oh you know maybe this was going to be something that was just going to be montreal focused and um you know i don't know how much utility it would be in a larger like you said marketing plan for me uh, but then i started hearing your name come up in emails more and more and then when i saw that you were giving access by working with the institutes and working with the vendors to like in the mars building you got that prime location um last year where you and i took a picture in front of hey everyone i'm here with geo from my yes and yes exactly was, this is a you know this is really a, the, the the biggest of uh, of biotech uh, yeah. connect show so far uh but uh this is now kind of a flagship for me because uh, I use this event to recruit new companies and they, they keep coming to other events as well. Yeah, but not just, I mean, even looking at the, you know, and the places in Halifax, like you've done things out there uh, or even like smaller institutes in Ontario. So no, so for me, from a, from, from a marketing strategy, um, you know, this is something that we definitely keep an eye on. We do, we don't do all the events because obviously marketing budgets and, but at the end of the day, I know that if it's an event being put on by, by your Guillaume, chances are it's going to be high quality. So that's kind of how you fit into the strategy, at least for our, uh, Eastern Canada for me. That's so sad because, uh, you know, I, I just had to cancel. You know, you mentioned the Dallas, uh, Halifax, you know, uh, uh, that was a, a great trip to go there. I was uh, doing shows in uh, Moncton, Halifax, and then Charlottetown in one week. Oh. Uh, this uh, was always, uh, you know, really uh, enjoyable, it's, you know. It's beautiful, and, uh, it's small community, and you get that still the big, big university feel, right? It's oh, wonderful. Okay, <laughs> now... Um, Probably you'll be able to, to tell me some uh, um, uh, things, uh, you know, related to, uh, to your work. Uh, do you have any anecdote? Um, you can choose either from, uh, from the, uh, a lab that, uh, you know, uh, when you were, you were try working in science or maybe yeah. uh, during your um, uh, t territory manager uh, career. Uh, do yeah. you have any funny or, you know, memorable <laughs> anecdote for me? I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, which one do I pick? Right. Uh, it's, it's, I've, um, when I was growing up, I, I, I'm introverted by nature, uh, by nature. I'm, I, I prefer oh, really? being in my hotel room at the end of the day. Um, I avoid networking events by, by nature, but I go to them because I know that I'll grow, I'll learn. And all through high school, I was growing up and I was, you know, shy. Um, it was my grade 10 drama class that uh, by mistake, I ended up in drama and that kind of just broke my shell out, right? But still, I have my introverted uh, tendencies, but I've been fortunate because sales has allowed me to really grow and change, right? And, and I've had a lot of awesome mentors along the way. Um, but I always, you know, early on in sales, the ego is big and you're like, okay, I can do this. I want to prove to, to uh, my, my trainer that I know what I'm doing. So I remember going into a lab and, and my person that I was traveling with, and this was at uh, uh, Nextall Biotechnologies, my first sales uh, job. Uh, it was a biotech here in Montreal started. Uh, and I go in and it was an account down in Alabama. 
And I walk into the lab and I didn't know that it was going to be my turn to finally start talking. So my trainer goes like, um, you know what? I'd like to introduce Zishan Farouk. Um, he'll be taking over the territory. Hey, Zishan, why don't, uh, why don't uh, you leave the call? I got nervous. Like my blood pressure went up, my blood sugar dropped. And <laughs> I was like, okay, I need to find out about whether this person is the right person to talk to. Do they have money? And how many people in the lab? And literally, I kid you not, that's exactly how my questions came out. I was like, um, excuse me, I want to make sure I'm speaking to like an important person in the lab. <laughs> and, like, uh, and she was the PI of the lab. And then I'm like, and you know, just to know, like, uh, what's the funding situation? Like, do you have money to buy things? And she <laughs> literally said, you know what? Um, I know it's you're 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 new, but I'm I'm gonna ask you to leave my lab, my office right now. And I was like, and I left. And my trainer was laughing. Sean, <laughs> I've never seen anybody crash and burn in such a small amount of time. <laughs> and I laugh at it now, but as you can imagine, then I was, uh, you know, I was, I was, I was devastated. I was like, no, sales is not for me. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So that that was, you know, one one of the stories, and another one that I, I do want to share, and I don't, I don't want to take up too much time, but it's really important because because being in sales is a very it's a a lonely, a lonely job. Lonely, not like boohoo, I'm alone, but more like you do a lot of things on your own. And uh, for me, the most difficult thing to overcome early on was um, eating alone. So eating alone and my first meal alone was, uh, in, it was actually in Boston uh, at Fenio Hall. Um, I was traveling there um, early in my career and the person I was traveling with, I thought that we were going to go have dinner together, but he had plans of his own and he just got off the tee. And when he left, he said, okay, Z, I'll see you tomorrow morning. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm alone. And <laughs> then I went, I sat down and I said, you know what, if, if I'm going to do this, I got to get used to these things. And fast forward 17 years later, uh, I'm still introverted by nature, but I've been humbled by a lot of experiences. Um, so uh, yeah, so a couple of stories and anecdotes about that. But I have many more that we can chat about some other time. That, that's good to write. Yeah, sure. We, we should uh, talk more, you know. Okay, now uh, we, uh, we, we had a lot of uh, uh, talk. Uh, this is already the time to go to our um, question from the ads. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Okay, basically, a uh, question from the ad are, you know, a, a little bit uh, lighter questions or funnier questions, but uh, I like to, uh, to, uh, to give a, a touch of humor at the end of the, the, the show. So okay. basically, uh, first question for you, um, are you PC, Android, or a Mac, uh, iPhone type of guy? Whew, uh, you know, I have to say uh, I'm, I'm both. So I've got the PC for the laptop, right? Uh, uh, but then I've got... I everything for everything else. iPhone, <laughs> iPad, right? Just because it integrates so well with the kids and, and my wife and, you know, our calendars are synced in. Uh, so I do both and I see the advantages of both, definitely. I get this more and more. You know, a few years back, it was uh, people were either uh, one. one or the other. But yeah. uh, now with work <laughs> and uh, sometimes you, you, you have a, a something, um, you know, provided to you for, for, for work and you have something yeah. else at home and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this is... Each of those technologies takes from the others. So uh, this yeah. is more and more similar. Okay. Well, I used to have a saying that uh, BlackBerry was for people that had a job and iPhone was for people who wish they had a job, right? <laughs> that was my saying. And I, I, I'm making it public that, that I, I, I am going back on my word there that that's not true because <laughs> I have a job and I have an iPhone. So yeah. but things change. Yeah. And then, but I see more people using both. Yeah. The only sad thing about, you know, the, the, this, Third option, BlackBerry it was uh, was Canadian. I know. Uh, and and I know. Uh, this is they, they, they could not make it. You know, this is uh, now gone. You know, my 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 kids never heard of it. Yeah, yeah. My my daughter found one and she uses it as a toy now. Like, Dad, what is this? You know, <laughs> is this what a rotary phone was? I'm like, no, dum dum. That's not a rotary phone. That's <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but this, I mean, they saw they saw the, this old phone uh, at my parents. Yeah, and you know we had to explain how it it, it worked because uh, you know like this they, they could not understand the, the use of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I would love to like take my daughters. I learned so much from my girls that just put a rotary phone and see what they do with it. You know, it'd be cool. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, there. Where's the touch screen on this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, another question for you. Um, Okay, I like it, this one. Uh, if you are a new addition to a Korean box, okay, 
Uh, mm -hmm. What color would you be and, uh, and why? All right, well, this answer is going to be uh, uh, pulled from the uh, rainbow right behind you. Uh, so my youngest daughter, she's got this phenomenal answer because we've asked her that question, like, what's your favorite color? And she says, rainbow. So we're like, rainbow? We're like, rainbow is not a color in the crayon <laughs> box. And she's like, no, I like rainbow. I like all of them. And I said, you know what? I'm going to steal it from her. And it, rainbow, like if I can be, because the, the thing that I've loved is uh, sticking to one color. It just doesn't work, right? And yeah, that's being... that's perfect question. I, yeah. I mean, a perfect answer. Yeah. And uh, by the way, that that's obviously from my daughter as well. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I like it. So uh, you can see it in my episode from about episode three or four. Um, yeah. So uh, she 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 thought uh, that would be a nice addition to my yeah my with podcast. the uh, hashtag uh, ça va bien aller puis uh, tout le monde in my neighborhood has it on their windows. So yeah, that's just funny. Hey, this is a. Uh, Uh, everywhere in the world, you can see uh, this, and this is the universal sign yep. of uh, hope. So, well, thank you so much. That, that was great. Uh, um, I don't know if uh, you want to add anything else before. Uh, no, really? uh, I mean, I thank you for the opportunity, Guillaume. I mean, what you're doing is awesome. Uh, it gets, uh, you know, vendors access into accounts. But, you know, the goal is not to just get access and get leads. It's really to add value wherever we can, right? So, uh, you know, Fluidime. And then myself, we really appreciate that. Exactly. If you want, by the way, uh, of course, uh, you can uh, share uh, some contact information if you want to, uh, uh, to uh, in have interested people to, to contact you. Yep. Um, you, can, uh, you can leave it me, uh, to me and I will put it under the, 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 the video Perfect. so that we can share your email, the website of your company. That will be, uh, that will, that will be my pleasure to share it uh, with the, the community. Well, thank you again, and thanks for uh, so quickly uh, uh, doing this. Uh, uh, you know, this, the, these episodes. I mean, the moment uh, the world shifted, you shifted and allowed everybody to still stay connected. So, so thanks, Lagio. No problem. Thank you so much, Zisan, and, and hope to see you soon in, in person. Yes, sir. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.